Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we are doing a wet belt on this Peugeot. Um, customers come up with massive oil pressure faults. Uh, it's been in at another garage, they've replaced the oil pressure switch. Made no difference. We've had a quick look and just by looking through the oil cap, you can see that the, uh, the wet belt is in a cracking condition. So we're going to strip it all down. Uh, I'll talk you through the process. Uh, this is a learning curve. I've never done one. So we're about to find out how much fun this really will be. So of course, with all of these, first things first, let's, what is that? Let's just disconnect the battery just for safekeeping. Uh, get that out of the way. Flip the cover down. So let's get to it. First things first, disconnect the battery. This is why we're changing it as well. Look at the state of that belt. Obviously, we're going to see it in more detail once we whip the cover off. So let's not waste time. Let's get to it. Okay, so we've got rid of all the induction system, just one 10 mil and disconnect that pipe and you can get the induction kit out of the way. Remove some various bits of wiring, a few bolts at the front. All the core plugs are out. Now to get the inlet manifold off, because we need the rock cover off, uh, it is a series of two tens and a load of eight mils. Now the eight mils, I don't think you're going to be able to see them, are uh, at the back here somewhere. There are four, four eight mils at the back. A um, little bit tricky to get to. Just can't see them anywhere. Sorry if I'm giving anyone motion sickness. There it is. Just about to see that one there. So they're all at the back. And then we whip the inlet manifold off and we will keep it moving. Right, so the inlet manifold was not as easy as I thought. It was a struggle to get it out. Uh, in the end, we had to loosen the engine mount, drop the engine right down just to get it out and it come out through there. So it come out kind of sideways. Uh, on the back there, as well as the uh, eight mils, there was an EVAP pipe and some wiring holding it all in. So not the easiest, a little bit annoying, but you know. But if you are loosening the engine mount, please remember, get a jack with a block of wood to support the engine when you do it. Don't just undo the bolts because you will have a problem on your hand. Okay guys, so this has now escalated into somewhat of a situation. So we're just looking at the belt. You can see that, you know, it's not in the best of condition. There's a chunk missing there, chunk missing there. But what is more scary is the lack of teeth. And as you can see on this side, there's a tooth missing and there's teeth missing there. But yeah, the teeth are indeed shredded from the belt. Now this car did in fact drive in. So, um, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna be turning the engine round, bit by bit. And you can, oh, it's just getting worse. How, there's just no teeth there. Okay, so we've spoken to the customer and they are still happy for us to proceed with the job. So, um, we're gonna tie it round to TDC. There is a hole here for the crank locking pin. So we're gonna turn it around and get to that. So a uh, little trick that I always do, cause you can't really see and you're forever doing it. Turn it around with an 80 mil socket and then put your phone up there on record with the torch and you can find the hole. Okay, so crank pin is in. Can't move it one way, can't move it the other. Just making sure that it's definitely locked up. So we are at TDC on the crank. Well, this customer needs to buy a lottery ticket. So. It's TDC on the crank. We've just fitted the locking tool up here. And as you can see, it is, it is all on TDC. <laughs> it's perfect, the timing is not out. These marks should point to there. That mark points to there. Uh, so yeah, okay, weird things have happened. Happy days. To be safe, I've just put some security marks on there just for my own knowledge. So, with about four 10 mils to relieve, uh, well, reveal the um, time and tensioner and idler. And no matter how many times I see it, seeing a belt with missing teeth just, just scares me. And I'm still don't know how this car's A, on time and B, running as nice as it was. Believe me, I'm just as shocked as you all are. Nearly forgot to say, don't forget to loosen the 18 mil, just make sure it's loose, well, nipped, and then Two 10 mils for the tensioner and the idler. That's all out. And we're gonna keep stripping and getting the rest of it out. So we've got to take the crank pulley out. But I'm gonna check the manual because I think you've got to do the cams first. I'll check. So 
you, it doesn't really matter at this point. You can remove the lower pulley first. Now, please, please be careful. I haven't got a seal to replace it with, but I can get one in. I put the bolts back in and we're gonna slide it out. I think it's all come as one. Uh, it's separating, right, I'm gonna take, take it out in two halves. There's one. There's a keyway as well, don't forget about that. I need a second hand. Yeah, so that's all out. Uh, note where the, the drift goes, that into that. It's gonna help us line it up later. Now we've got to whip the cams off and remove whatever the hell is left of that belt. We're gonna to get to finally see how bad it is. But put this somewhere safe. So it's E14, took me a few attempts to size it up. Uh, on a bar, just crack the pulleys off. And get them off, get them out. But I should really label which one's exhaust and which one's inlet. I'm gonna do that now, just in case I get them mixed up. Can't really get them mixed up, but it doesn't hurt to label them nicely. And it is that time. It is that time to see how bad the belt is. I am personally shocked. I mean, there's what? One tooth, another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-two teeth so far missing, twenty-three, twenty-four. 25, 26, 27, 28. And then we're back round to where we started, I believe. So 28 teeth missing. Nice. So because of the condition of the belt and everything else, we thought, I don't know, we'll take the sump off. So remove the sump. Look at that strainer. I mean, look at it. How anything got through that, I will never, ever know. So now the meticulous game of removing and cleaning everything begins. So there's 24 teeth. That's just out of the pan. We've still got the strainer to remove now. Right, that is all the crap and sludge out of the uh, pickup. So we had 24 teeth removed from the pan. Then four bring it to 28. And then three bring it to 31, which means one, I can't count, but two, what a result. So a lot of cleaning. There was debris everywhere. We've just cleaned, cleaned, made a huge mess on the floor. Uh, I've got the sump there, which is getting clean. I still got clean it all up, there's just more cleaning. There's more cleaning involved than actually um, spannering at this moment in time. Uh, 31 teeth is a record, I've never seen anything like it. So we are gonna start the rebuild process. Uh, I'm gonna leave the sump off for now, just because there's a lot of brake and clutch cleaner in there. So that will all evaporate and clean up. Um, let's start rebuilding. What a mess. The floor, mess. Drainer, mess. You know, we're filthy everywhere, but everything's nice and clean now. So now we're gonna hit the stage of rebuilding. I've blown the oil galleries. As you can see, there's oil everywhere. Blown through the oil galleries, done everything. The strainer, I've removed and cleaned. But look at it, <laughs> mate. It's just a mess everywhere. But you know, it's good fun. I'm enjoying this. I hope everyone else is enjoying it so far. We opted to remove the strainer and clean it, and blow through it. I'm on my like 20th set of gloves. Um, so now it is rebuild. So I've dropped the belt through, lined up the, the key, giving it a little wiggle, that's not going anywhere. I'm just gonna put the bolt in there just to hold it in place so it doesn't fall out. Uh, then put cams on, tensioners, idlers, etc. Here's a top tip. Do not buy the same containers. One's white grease, one's braking clutch, because what happens is you spray a load of braking uh, white grease all over the engine. Okay, tensioner and idler are on, and the sump is on. Okay, so we're all done and tightened. I've got that right on the notch, maybe just a little over, but it's all well and good. I think I'm bang on there. I can't find the torque setting for these two, okay? So I'll revisit them. At the moment, they are just very tight. Uh, but I've got to go up top and tighten the defasers now. Um, it's going good, I've got hope now. So defasers are on, um, according to Haynes, it's 20 newton meters each, and I think it's 120. Got it written down, but I'll double check that in a minute. E14, 2020, 120 angle. I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling this now, let's do this. Done them both to 120. That was a struggle on my own, not gonna lie. But they're both done, so 
20, then 120. 20 Newton meters, then 120 degrees on both. Very good, very nice. Uh, after a little dig around on Haynes, I found that these are 20 Newton meters torqued. I've, ni I've made sure they're tight and they are 20, which is good. Nice little click and a clack. Oh God, now it's a time of, um, I'm gonna pull the lower pin. Oh, I still need to, need to do the crank. That's what I need to do, hold on. Okay, crank pin is out, uh, top time tools are out, everything is on and tight. The crank is tight as well. So now we're gonna spin it round and make sure we land where we started. Okay, we spun it round three times. Come on. Nice. Now we're gonna check the crank. All the marks are exactly where they should be. Oh, so nice, I can't get it back off. The crank locking is in there like swimwear. We're getting there, we're getting there. Oil's in, got enough oil. I've soaked the belt in oil as we poured it in. Read on the technical bulletin, that's what you gotta do. So let's get everything else on. We're not too far away. Okay, we are fully reassembled, inlet manifold on, all the eight mils at the back. Uh, everything all plugs sensors connectors and then there's two tens at the front air box all in i've left the core packs out because i can't disconnect the injectors so core packs are out we're going to prime get oil pressure before we start it up so we're all together i've left the core packs out so we're going to start it up uh, we're going to get oil pressure up to the top uh, and uh, hold on for dear life okay we cranked it for a while we saw the uh, rpm gauge lifting which means we have oil pressure now it's that time right we are um Ready to start it, core packs are in, let's go. Right, we're all good to go, let's fire it. Three, two, one, bit of R. Kelly. Great success. All right, after a nice four mile road test to make sure everything's all good, this one is done. 